to do now in our next lesson is take what you know about expressing the same value as a fraction, as a percent, and as a decimal, and apply those skills for this lesson called percent of change. Now, percent of change has three vocabulary words, I'm sorry, three vocabulary terms to this lesson, but because they're quite lengthy, I spread them out over two boards. Let's take a look at our first, percent of change. When we talk about the percent of change, we're talking about how much a quantity increases or decreases with respect to its original amount. And now we have our next two vocabulary terms. First, we have percent of increase. The percent of increase is the percent of change in a quantity when the new amount is greater than the original. And then you can probably guess what percent of decrease is. The percent of decrease is, the, I'm sorry, the percent of change in a quantity when the new amount is less than the original. Now there's a certain formula that we're going to follow in this lesson. And here it is, called the percent of change formula. And when we talk about percent of change, we use this series of symbols here, a lowercase p and a percent sign. It's a lot easier than writing percent of change every time. So in order to find the percent of change, we have to set up a ratio, we have to set up a fraction. And in our numerator, what we have is called the difference of the amounts. And you'll get to understand that once we start working through our examples. When we talk about percent of change, we have two values we're working with, our original number and our new number. And that new number tells us if we're going, if we're increasing or decreasing. So we basically subtract those two numbers and then divide that difference by the original amount. And there are several steps that you need to follow. And I don't want your feeling intimidated by the number of steps because working them out in our problems is actually a lot more, is a lot quicker than looking at these one at a time. But you'll want to pause the video here so that you can copy all these steps. And we are going to follow these as we work through our first two examples. Let's take a look at our first step. First, you have to determine if the new amount is greater or less than the original. Then what I'm going to have you do is draw an arrow. And just remember that while these will not make sense right now, they will once we put them into practice. After you draw your arrow, what you're going to do is write the percent of change formula. After that, we'll rewrite the formula, but this time plugging in the amounts that we're going to be working with. Once we have subtracted our numerator, and we are going to simplify our fraction, then we're going to convert the fraction to a decimal by dividing, remember, fractions or division problems. So we'll take our numerator and divide it by our denominator. After that, we will convert the decimal to a percent by multiplying it by 100. And then we'll write a statement. And that statement is simply that the rate of increase is x amount or the rate of decrease is whatever we find it to be. And so here we have our first example. Find the percent of change. Our original amount is 1,100, and our new amount is 1,969. So as I said, in our first step, we have to determine when we move from the original to the new number, are we increasing or decreasing? You can see that the number is bigger. It's increasing. So we're going to draw our arrow, and I mean an up arrow, just to remind us that the amount is going up. Our next step after that is to write the percent of change formula. So the percent of change is the difference. I'm just going to shorthand it a little bit. Divided by the original. And for this problem, what that means, because our next step says to rewrite the formula, but this time using the numbers that we have. So the difference between, we are going to write 1,969 minus 1,100 divided by our original amount, which is 1,100. So our percent change is 1,969 minus 1,100 is 
I'm sorry, not 800. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, 869 divided by 1100. And you might be tempted to look at that and think that it's already in its simplest form. But after you fuss with the numbers a little bit, you'll see that they do have a factor in common. They actually have a factor 11 as the greatest common factor. 11 goes into our denominator 100 times. And 11 goes into our numerator 79 times. Our next step is to simplify the fraction here, 79 and 100 are relatively prime, so we can't simplify this. Our next move is to convert this to a decimal. 79 divided by 100 is 0 0.79. Then we multiply that by 100. Remember what that means is we take our decimal point, if you wanted to do it the short way, move it to the right twice, and we end up with 79. I don't have room on the board to write my statements, but my statement will be is that the percent of change is an increase of 79%. Now we're going to follow these same steps in our second example. So here we're going, we're working with smaller numbers here, but the steps are the same, whether they're great or, or small numbers. From 12 to 8, we always have to look in relation to our original number. So when we go from 12 down to 8, I already said it, we're going down. So I'm going to put my down arrow. Following with our steps, we are going to write our formula. So the percent of change is the difference. Divided by the original. So our percent of change is 12 minus 8 over the original number, which is 12. The percent of change is 4 over 12. 4 over 12 can be simplified to 1 third. Then our next step, if you remember, is we have to move from a fraction into a decimal. 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.3. 3 repeated. Now remember what I said because this isn't where we end. We move now from a decimal into a percent. And remember what I say in class is that when you have a decimal that repeats, you want to take the pattern, in this case it's just a 3, and repeat it a few times. Because now when you multiply it by 100 and you take your decimal point and you move it twice, 1, 2, you are reminded that even though it's in a percent, the number still does repeat. You want to make sure that you're not tempted to just stop after the first after the decimal point and call it 33. And then our statement here would be that the percent of change is a decrease of 33 point a repeated 3%. And now we have two more examples. These are a little different, and these have their own set of steps, and I've already worked out the problems, as you can see. So the one kind of problem that you'll see in this lesson are the kinds we just went over to find the percent of change. Here, what we're doing instead is we're moving a little, we're going in a little bit of a different direction. We're going to increase a number by a certain percent. And the next example, as you probably guessed, we're decreasing. So here's what we have to do when we're increasing a number. If we're increasing, it means we're making it bigger, so we're making it in excess of its whole. That means we have to add 100% to our percent of change. After we do that, we're going to change our percent to a decimal, and then multiply the original amount by that new decimal. And I worked out the steps right here. We take 100%, we add it to our percent change, and we have 154%. Then what we do is, this should look familiar. I set it up this way so that you would have a familiarity with it. We're taking now 
of our original amount, 30. So I've made my helper arrows. We move from 154% to 1.54 because we divided that by 100. The word of means we are multiplying, and our original amount is 30. So 1.54 times 30 is 46.2. So 46.2 is our new amount. And our fourth and final example, as I said, we're going to decrease. Now, the only step from this example to our previous one that is different is the first one. Here, what we're going to do is subtract our percent change from 100 because we are making the number smaller. We want a smaller piece of it. Then we're going to, everything else is the same. We change the percent to a decimal. We multiply the original amount by that decimal. And I worked it out here. 100% minus our percent change leaves us 82%. And we take our 82% divided by 100 so that we have our decimal equivalent, 0.82. So 0.82 times our original amount, 70, leaves us with 57.4%. And I, I hope that you have grasped the reasoning of this. If we are decreasing a num this number, 70, by 18%, then what we're doing is finding the 82%. You could do it a longer way by first multiplying your original number by your percent of change and then subtracting that from the whole, but I think this is a little bit um, easier to follow.